Psalms chapter 21 To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Again, psalms are, are your hymnal in your book, in your Bible. The king, okay, so the king of Israel, shall joy in thy strength, God's strength, not the king's strength, not man. Joy in, in the strength of God would be to do everything you wanted to do. You know, it takes strength to get out of bed in the morning. It takes strength to, to get dressed. It gets, takes strength to open up your eyes and to see. And that's all by the blessing of God that we don't thank him as much as we should, O Lord. And in thy salvation, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in the Old Testament, even though Christ hasn't come and wasn't born the virgin and died and wasn't buried, still God knows that Jesus Christ is coming. They look for the Messiah, especially David. And when David died, he went off to Abraham's bosom. How greatly shall he rejoice. And the king trusts him in the Lord and what the, what the Lord has done for him, even in the Old Testament. And what the Lord's going to do. I mean, you want to talk about faith. How long they sat in Abraham's bosom waiting for the Lord in rest. Still believing. There was faith in the, in the Old Testament. Thou God has given him his heart's desire. And I believe when, when David committed a sin with Bathsheba, when God spoke to the prophet, he said, Listen, if you wanted another wife, I would have given you one. When Solomon comes along, God, God gives Solomon a blank check. Anything you want. Oh, Christians would love to get that one today. And the things they would ask for. And has not withholding the request of his lips, Selah. So David got from God everything. But David was a special kind of guy that, you know, he wasn't the Lord Jesus Christ. He sinned, we know that. But his heart was, was to God. He thought about God when he's sitting in his house one day. He's like, Dang, I'm, in, I'm in beauty. I'm in splendor. I'm in greatness here. And the Lord's down there in that, that ugly looking tent. Things have got to change. He thought about the people when, when there were 200 in his in his group that were just so tired, couldn't do nothing. And the others were like, oh, no, you can't get, no. They were like, yeah, they get part of it. They still had a job. They protected this place. David is a wonderful man. For thou preventest him. Now, when you look at the word prevent, and even I, when I read this verse this morning, I'm like, it don't make sense. It says, for thou prevented him with the blessings of goodness. Now, you would look at that and say, you mean God stopped the blessings of goodness. And that's not what it is. We, in our words today, have been downplayed, have been made worse. In the Bible, cunning doesn't mean you're slick and a salesman. It means somebody who's, a, who's good at their job. Here, prevent means to go before, to precede. For thou, God, goeth before him with the blessings of goodness. God went, already went ahead of David. And seeing what the ahead was, for, for we have a God that knows what's going to happen tomorrow. God, knowing what tomorrow is going to be in David's life, blessed him today. And gave him the roots. Listen, God could have had David killed any time with King Saul, but God knowing up ahead, knowing up the head, knowing what kind of king that David would be, knowing how David's reactions were going to be, even with Bathsheba, God blessed David. God blessed David with, with a blessing and beyond all blessings that that David would be the 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 uh, family line, the Lord Jesus Christ, the long waited Messiah. That David would be prince in the millennium. That David, he says, or ever would have somebody sit on the throne of Israel. And then even David broke down in a prayer like, who am I, Lord? Lord, all I did was ask to build you a house and you built my house. 
So here's a word that we use wrong today. Thou God set us a crown of pure gold on his head. Now, isn't that wonderful? Now, if you read the Bible account, when they went in and conquered uh, Jeb Jebusites, what was uh, Jerusalem, or will, would have been Jerusalem after David won the battle, and he, he built the city of David there, and it says that he, when Joab beat the Jebusites, that David put a crown upon his head. They took the crown off the king and they gave it to David. Well, either there's a contradiction in the Bible or something's wrong here because it says God says a crown of pure gold on his head. What is that? That's the thing that every Christian today in America needs to get that God set President Obama in the White House at the Oval Office. We may have voted for him. I mean, the nation may have voted for him, but God put him in the office. God put the numbers to Obama. You got a problem with who's in that White House, you better have a talk with God. Because he's the one that did it. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest him. So life came from David. David lived to be an old man. Even length of days forever and ever. Now David's coming back in the millennium. He's going to be coming back in the eternity of the new earth. I know David's going to sit as prince in the millennium, but will he sit as prince in the new earth? He's got to. Because in his family and his sons, there will be always a seed of David. So David hasn't died. You say, oh, yes, he has. Not his soul. His body's still rotting. Not his soul. His, his glory is great as thy salvation. So your glory is to be a salvation. Honor and majesty has thou laid upon him, David. God gave him salvation, gave him glory, gave him honor and majesty. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Forever. How can he do that if David's in a grave? He's not. His body's in a grave. Unlike the Jehovah Witness teaching, listen, just because they put you in that hole in the ground or you blow up in, in three million thousand pieces because of a war or you're sitting down at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean or wherever. That ain't it. That'd be a life most miserable if that was forever. You laid in a, in a, in a grave. Thou hast made him exceeding glad for thy countenance. Now countenance is the facial. When did David ever see God. When did David? He's going to. He's seeing God today. Can you imagine seeing if, if, this? This a wonder to see in the millennium David and Jesus Christ standing there together. Great, 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 great grandpa and great, 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 great grandson with Ruth and and Bathsheba and. All the all the saints of the Old Testament sitting there. For the king trusts in the Lord. We can't say that about our president, but we can pray for him to do. And through the mercy of the Most High, see, he says the king trusts his Lord. Even that, oh, I, I'm a Christian, all that, but David fell, and you're going to fall. You're a sinner, and you're going to be prone to sin. Though the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Move what? The throne. That throne is always going to be a Jewish throne. And that throne, as of David, will be always David's throne. I believe in the, when Gabriel speaks to Mary, I believe he says the throne of David. Why not the throne of, of 
of Solomon? Why not the throne of, of, of Rehoboam? Why not the throne? What about any other? No, it's David. You know what that implies? And I'm going to say this, and you don't have to. You don't have to believe this. But had the nation of Israel done right under David, done what they were supposed to, laws, all that, maybe David would never have died. Because the next thing after him was the temple was built. You imagine having that temple built on the surest foundation that Israel come to God, that their their leader, their 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 king is supposed to be, and their and their God, and say, you know what, we want to do right, and we're not, we're sinning, and we want to get rid of the sin business. We want to trust you. They had that chance under Jesus, and they blew it. They had that chance in the Book of Acts. And they blew it. Thy hand shall find out all thy enemies. To conquer. To realize, hey, you know what? There's somebody in this kingdom who, who doesn't like you, David. Absalom. There's somebody out there who's planning a trick against you. You know, David sent ambassadors one time. And they took the guys that they shaved half their hair and cut off half their clothes. Well, David found out, guess what? They're an enemy. The father was peaceful, not not the son. David knew all the time. He's sitting there, he's talking to Jonathan, and, you know, what about your father? He found out that Saul was his enemy. And God will reveal to you who your enemies are. You need to pay attention and listen. You know, David had enemies in his own family. David had enemies in his own army. David had enemies in his own kingdom. And as a born-again Christian, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution except from fellow Christians. I don't think so. Paul, we read today in the Philippians, he said, listen, no church wouldn't even take care of me, but you guys did. Paul, the great Paul that we lift up, couldn't even get help from churches. So... Thy right hand, Lord Jesus Christ, shall find out those that hate thee. Hmm. I guess Jesus found out when they said, crucify him, crucify him. You ever wonder how many of those people that stood there and said, crucify him, or any ones that he healed? Can you imagine one that was dumb? Now, in the Bible, dumb doesn't mean... Uh, Dumb means you can't speak. Can you imagine a, a person that was dumb that Jesus healed and now crying out, crucify him? It would never happen. You haven't been in a Baptist church. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thy anger. Second advent. Fiery oven, that's hell. That's the baptism of fire that John speaks about. Of the Spirit, first advent. Of fire, the second advent. To be a born-again Christian, whoever you are, and to say that you're, you want the baptism of fire, you are a fool. The Lord shall swallow them up, the enemies, in his wrath. And the fire shall devour men. Them. Have you read Daniel 3.19? Have you read in Daniel where, where uh, the three Hebrew boys did not get burned up? I can lose my salvation. The Hebrew boys weren't killed. God protected them. Fire as hell. Fire ain't going to touch a Christian. Ain't going to touch a, a child of God. Now you may go through the fire. They may burn you at the stake. That's not the fire here is talking about. Their fruit shall that their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. The offspring. 
Listen, that second advent, when Jesus Christ comes back on that horse, in front of him is going to be death and hell. They're going to die and they're going to end up in hell. That's what I mean. For they intended evil against thee, Jesus, God. They imagined a mischievous device. Read the book of Fox, read Fox's book of martyrs and find out what mischievous devices were. Starting with the cross of Jesus, starting with the cat of nine tails that went across Jesus. You can go back in the Old Testament and find out the, the prophets that were killed in the name of Jesus. Lord Jehovah God. Anything to get rid of God. Mischievous devices today in our own country of America it may not kill the Christian, but let's get the Bibles out of school. Let's get the, the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse. Those are mischievous devices. Let's tell a guy who, who has principles, who has a business, that you must make sodomite cakes. And if you don't, we're going to find you. I mean as in money, fine, or jail. That's a mischievous device. How about the churches? Mischievous divide. Oh, to be saved, be baptized. Or join our church. Be part of our church. Do some works. That's a mischievous device. Having people think that doing something for Jesus Christ and then have Jesus Christ say unto Lord, didn't we do this to you? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I? Depart from me. I never knew you. That's a mischievous device. Thinking you're saved and you're not. That's very mischievous. Which they are not able to perform. Religion can't perform what it promises you. Religion can't get you salvation. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back. When thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon the, thy strings against the face of them. They're going to run away from God. They're going to hide in the mountains. And it's interesting, as we're studying along, as we hit the book of Proverbs, God, I mean, we talk about God with a sword, but he has an arrow and a bow. The Antichrist has a bow, but no arrows. So what's wrong with Valentine's Day? He's stolen from God. You know that th that little Cupid guy, Eros, you know he's a God, G-O-D-S. A God that holds a bow and an arrow. That's God. Striking love. Well, where does love come from? God is love, the Bible says. Eros or Cupid, that cute little guy, you're stealing from God. That's the Antichrist. For God so loved the world, he didn't shoot you with an arrow. Arrows go to the enemy. Be thou exalted, Lord. He will. In thy own strength. Imagine God being in his strength. You know, you know how strong God is? Let there be a big fiery ball of fire to light up the entire solar system. Boom. <laughs> there it is. You know how powerful God is? Uh, make this animal. It's a mammal. It lays eggs and it's got fur and, and boom. <laughs> okay, evolution explain that one. Oh, hey, I'll do any more. Hey, here's a fish that's a mammal that gives live birth and, and, and the animal feeds off milk. But it's in, but it's in the water. So explain that. That's the strength of God. That's the humor of God. Where is the strength of God? You tell me from the garden to Gethsemane what man could have taken what Jesus took. And then carry his own cross. No wonder he fell down at it. Imagine out in that sun on the cross before the lights went out, 
of heaven and sweating on his own wounds? I gotta wonder. I wanted this. Oh, I cling to the old rugged. Girl. Was that cross really smooth, or was it maybe you know? Uh, I can't think of a word that uh, you get splinters, maybe even worse. You just imagine Roman government. Hey, this guy thinks he's that's the worst piece of wood right there. I mean, I, I got a splinter. He has to use that one. And then I'm, now I'm just saying you don't have to believe this because this is not recorded in the scriptures. I'm just saying. And if that's the case, a, a wood that gets splinters, as they pick that thing up and throw it into the hole, boom, he gets more splinters. And the wounds that's already there. So we, uh, yeah, so while we, so will we sing and praise thy power of God. And God who is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ who will be king over Israel, as the king here is David, will be the prince. Uh, queen Victoria of England said she would love to have the Lord Jesus. She was saved. She said she would love to have the Lord Jesus Christ come during her time so she can step down off her throne and crown him with her crown and let him take her seat while she sat at his seat and bowed. That's royalty that has saved and loved the Lord and wants to do right. <coughs> oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through out the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bears.